Good morning, brothers and sisters, and welcome to this week's service. It is always an honor to be in the space of God and to fellowship with each other. And so thank you so much for joining us. A kind reminder, we are back at the church. We are open for physical services. So if you'd like to come through to the church, do come through at the back hall, in the youth hall, or you can also choose to worship in the main sanctuary. We begin this service by lighting the candle together. And we light this candle as a constant reminder that regardless of whatever is happening in the world, God remains our light. In the beginning, the Bible says, the world was without form and shape, and darkness was hovering above everything. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And so as we begin this service by lighting the candle, we are reminding ourselves that God is the light of the world. And we pray for God to always shine upon our lives. And let us pray. Father, we come before you this morning, knowing and acknowledging that there is no God like you, Father. And we just want to give you thanks, Lord God, for the gift of life, for the gift of family, friends, and all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We also come to you to confess our sins, since we have committed against you and against each other. Also help us, Lord God, to forgive those who we have sinned against and to also give us power and strength to ask for forgiveness when we have wronged other people. We pray with those that are grieving for the losses of their loved ones and those that have experienced any loss of any kind. We ask you, Lord God, to hold them in your care and your love. We also, Lord God, pray for your world. We pray for peace and we pray for light. We pray that your people may come to know you, Lord God, and may people may always learn to trust and lean on you. We pray this in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so, friends, let us now worship God in song.
We find our scripture reading from the book of Isaiah chapter 55, verse 1 to verse 9. Invitation to the thirsty. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no, wood, who have no money, come buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me, eat what is good, and you will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me. Listen, that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. My faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a ruler and commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations you do not know will come running to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. Seek the Lord while he may be found, call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways, and their unrighteousness their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on them. And to our God, for he freely, for he freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. And as the heavens are higher than the earth, so I am my ways than yours, and my thoughts than yours. This is the word of God, and thanks be to God. Friends, we receive this morning an invitation from the Lord in the book of Isaiah chapter 55. It's an invitation to the thirsty. One of the things that we have all noticed and we all agree upon is that we cannot live on thirst. We cannot live without waters. And so the invitation it's not an invitation for people to be without water, but it's an invitation to God because God says, come all of you who are thirsty and come to the waters. So in the beginning, God always invites us to a relationship with him. And so allow me to title my message this morning, titled Our Way or God's Way. And so we always are left with two choices. It's either we are going to do things our way or we are going to do things the Lord's way. And so this morning we find ourselves reading the book of Isaiah chapter 55. And so God also says to them, my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways. And so when you read this book, it's a book that resonates with us because we are people who always want to work hard. We are people who are always wanting to buy things. And every now and then, we either want to buy clothes. And when we buy clothes today, few days down the line, they are out of fashion. We want to buy PS4, and few months down the line, there is PS5. We want the latest fashion trends. We want the latest gadgets. And every now and then, they are always outdated. And so that's why... God is saying, come to me, come to the waters, those of you who are thirsty. And so the first thing that we notice here is that God invites us, not just to a water found in the tap. God is inviting us to quench our thirst through him. And when we find water from God, we never go thirsty. And so this is why in the New Testament, Jesus says, those who are hungry, must come to me and they will never hunger again. And those who are thirsty should come to me because out of me flows rivers of the living water. And so Jesus, God says now, even when you don't have money, come buy and enjoy. So God is offering everything that he's offering. He's saying it is without a cost. So the things that we receive and work hard for in this world, are things that has a price tag. But what God is offering to us is priceless and permanent. And what the world is offering has a price and can only be for a certain time. So God is saying, come to me. 
And again, God is asking us a question, particularly we as young people in this time that we live in. Why spend money on what is not bread? Why do we spend money on what's not important, on what's not life-giving? That's what God is saying. Why do you labor for what does not satisfy you? How many things do we have and yet we are not satisfied? How many gadgets do we try by all means to find hope in and yet we are not satisfied? How many people do we try hang around? How many squads, how many friends group do we have and yet we are still not satisfied? How many clothes do we have and yet still not, not satisfied? How many places do we go to and still yet feel empty? And so God says to us, listen to me. Eat what is good and you will delight in the riches. God says to us, you will not find, you will not find fulfillment into these things. But rather, choose me because it's only through me that you're going to find. You're going to find fulfillment. And so we find ourselves in a time where many young people, the people that we look up to, continuously commit suicide and at times we are affected because these are the people that we look up to and sometimes we even ask ourselves questions but they had it all why is it that they even went and did this but then we realize that we cannot solely base our lives on materialistic things so we need to find god and so now we find god turning god's people around He's saying to them, you've got two choices. You can either do this life thing your way or my way. But the good thing is that when you do it my way, you will live. When you do it my way, you will not get thirsty. When you do it my way, you will not hunger. When you do it my way, you are not going to find yourself feeling lonely and empty. But when you do it your way, it's going to always be based on temporary things. And so, young people in the Lord, God is saying, in all of these things that you are wanting, pause a little bit and seek Him now while He can still be found. And so our lives should be based and should be in the hands of the Lord, not based on the things that we can attain. And so for the longest of time, the people that God is writing to, God is saying to them, return to me. Because they had wandered, they had moved away from the Lord. They have gone against what God had commanded. They have gone against what God had advised. They had gone against everything that God has asked them to do. And so God is saying, come back to me, for I am your God. Come back to me. So we like to live in control. Control of our lives. We are not immune from surprises. And when things go or happen beyond our control, we feel helpless and forsaken. And that's what happens. Sometimes we want to be in charge. Until we realize that we cannot be in charge anymore and we feel helpless and forsaken. But when our lives are in the Lord, when God is in charge, there's no way where we are going to feel forsaken and helpless. So God's people had frequently turned away from Him. They were not listening to Him. They were not following what He wanted them to do. They wanted things their way. They at some point even felt like they don't need God. And so sometimes when we have all of these things that we need, we feel like we don't need God. And so friends, we need God. Just how were the Israelites rebelling against God? According to Isaiah, they were seeking that which does not satisfy. They had been acquiring material security. And in other ways, primarily, con primarily consumed with their own physical needs. They had neglected their faith. 
they were consumed with their way and not, not God's way. And so I want us to then reflect. Are we consumed with God's way or our ways? Is it about God or is it about us? What are things that are satisfying us? Are they things of God? Or are they things that satisfy us only for a few days and we are back to feeling helpless? And so friends, journey with me into a time of Lent. Because this is a time where we remind each other. Where we remind each other that God is present. Even though we had wandered and turned away from him, he is still inviting us to say, come home, my children. I love you. And when you come home, I will not count your sins against you. I will love you and I will embrace you. When you are with me and when you are in me, you will not feel helpless and forsaken. Because I will be your help. Because I promise that I will never forsake nor leave you. And so allow me then, friends, to say, may our lives be in the hands of the Lord. May we not be consumed by our way, but may we be consumed by God's way. And God's way is a way of life. God's way is a way of satisfaction. God's way is a way of fulfillment. God's way is a way of love. God's way is a way of relationship with Him. God's way is a way of righteousness. And God's way is the way in which you and I have been called for. May we be consumed by God's way. And let us pray. Father, I just want to come before your holy presence and ask for forgiveness, Lord. And lament, cry over things, Lord God, that we have done as your people. Sometimes we forget about you, Lord. Sometimes it's not about you in our lives, but it's about what we need. Sometimes it's about these materialistic things, Lord God, that make us feel good for a moment. Sometimes it's about people, Lord God, and pleasing them to be in their space. But Lord God, forgive us for those moments when we wanted our way and not your way. Forgive us, Lord God, for those moments when you were speaking to us and we ignored your ways but went for what we thought was right. Forgive us, Lord God, for moments, Lord God, when you were trying to reach out to us as you constantly do, but we, we didn't want that. Forgive us, Lord God, for days and times where we are supposed to be following your ways and hearing your voice. But instead, we are consumed by our own voices and voices of those around us. And Lord God, through this service, we thank you for your word. Your word that reminds us, Heavenly Father, that we need to come back and return to you. Because you are still inviting us to your kingdom. Even when we have wandered and turned against you, you are still saying, come home, my children. And so, Lord God, Holy Spirit, help us find our way home. May we seek to live and love you. We pray this, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. And friends, we have reached to the end of our service. Thank you so much for joining us. Another reminder, we are still um, in the property. May you come through and come fellowship with us. And lastly, may we bless each other with the words of the benediction. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen.